health department is private. Day. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to the Newburn Redevelopment Commission meeting. Thank you for all that you do in our great city. Thank you for sacrificing your time today. We are certainly delighted to see you uh, today. Uh, we have a full agenda, so we will go ahead and get started. Vice Chair, if you will call the roll for us, please. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Proctor. Excused. Commissioner Walker. Here. Commissioner Bryan. Here. Commissioner Morgan. Excused. Commissioner Strickland. On its way. Commissioner Power. Here. Commissioner Wallace. Here. Chair Lee. Here. Vice Chair Paragoy is here. Ex officio members Alderman Prill. Here. Alderman Best. Alderman Royal. You have a quorum, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Thank you so so much. We have had um, a call to order and welcome our roll call and we are going to item three and that is to approve the uh, agenda with uh, one change I will say and that one change would be we will make we will take a 10 minute uh, break uh, during item six. And that is the only change to uh, the agenda or the only change in the order of which we uh, will go this evening. So could I have a motion to approve the agenda? Make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nays? Ayes have it. Thank you. Our guiding principles are on the next page. If we could start with Commissioner Bryant for our guiding principles tonight. Past, present, future. Equal time. Respect others' opinion. Listen to build consensus. Share accurate information, public perception. Stay focused, be action oriented. Believe. Yes. Believe. Ends with the perfect person. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Okay. Um, now we have public uh, comment, and that is limited to 40, uh, four minutes. I have one. Uh, request and petition of citizens to sign in uh, sheet. Do we have any others uh, tonight? Did anyone want to speak that had not signed in? Okay. All right. We will have Ms. Ruth uh, Cooper coming to speak to us again. Issue concern health and wellness center on Bloomfield Street litter and dumping in the Duffy Field community. Thank Hi. you, Ms. Cooper. Thank you for my four minutes. Uh, if you don't recognize me, you, you might remember that I wear this green t-shirt a lot. And uh, the city says we're going to do an anti-litter campaign. We're still working on the county. Uh, I do appreciate that y'all uh, printed out the flyers about the Duffy Field cleanup and that the uh, city provided the grabbers and stuff. I was really disappointed that uh, not many people came. You know, I and Terry Holloway and others from the Phoenix Project were there, my husband, um, Alderman Brinson was there, two inmates and a deputy from the county, uh, two people from the Y, two women from my church, and no one else. You know, these other sponsors, the uh, W. Phil Residence Council, People's Assembly, and even the Redevelopment Commission, nobody was able to come help us. So I need your help in knowing what I can do for the next cleanup to try to get people involved. Mm -hmm. I don't think all these flyers that I passed out and posted downtown and then picked up after the cleanup did a bit of good. And why would anybody in New Bern want to come to clean up Duffy Field when they could go to the Vanceboro Strawberry Festival or the Kinston Barbecue Festival? You know, why do it? And I think even the people that go to Clean Sweep are getting kind of tired of peeping, picking up other people's trash. Mm -hmm. So I really think we need a, a plan to really have people have a come to Jesus moment when they stop littering so much. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, that's my thing. <laughs> um, so but anything y'all can do to help me, you know, you, I think you've all got my phone number and email and stuff because I really want to work with people in the neighborhood and you know, give out more t-shirts, give out grabbers, do whatever I can and maybe get the city to put some more waste cans in these vacant lots that mm -hmm. people trash pretty well. Because I know, you know, one of your guiding principles is to take proactive measures to eliminate blight and stop further degradation of the community. So I think if we can, you know, try to clean up these littered lots, that would be great. Um, my other big concern is the um, 
Health and Wellness Center. I've been an RN since 84. I got my master's in nursing education, and I'm a licensed nurse in North Carolina. I might like to practice at this health center, but I haven't really seen anything recently about the progress that's being made. Maybe uh, Mr. Wallace can tell me about that, or anybody else. You know, it's just, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I sometimes am just real impatient, as you may know, and the aldermen know. I just keep kind of harping on things that I wake up in the middle of the night thinking about, so I come and talk about them. And, this isn't working, so I don't know if I have any time left or not. But, um, you know, thank you for what you do, but I would just like to do more to prevent uh, littering in Duffy Field and make it a nicer place. I don't know if y'all have, I know you have the neighborhood group. Uh, I don't think, Mr. I think maybe. Mr. Morgan is not here yeah, this he's evening. Not here, and you have the health and wellness group. Um, it was one other thing. Um, I forget what it was, but anyway, uh, anything you can do to help me, you know, get people involved. I mean, I would buy the grabbers. I would meet with people, you know, block captains. I know Terry's going to try to get me uh, to be able to come to the residence council because mm -hmm. uh, I'm just an old retired woman who has a little too much time to do things that I want to do, but I just need other people to help me because uh, sometimes. I've been told that I shouldn't just appear in Duffy Field that or people are going to wonder what this old white woman is doing there, you know, so. <laughs> no, they won't. Pardon? <laughs> they won't. No, they won't. They've seen you enough, so. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not afraid of the people, and I'm usually not afraid of the dogs, but, I mean, I don't like seeing an under underfed dog roaming around looking for food. You know, that bothers me, so. But if there's anything you can tell me or help me to help the residents of Duffy Field and to help the litter problem there, because, uh, well, you know, Terry knows. Terry blames it a lot on the wind blowing litter around, but I figure <laughs> people have to put those uh, Corona bottles and pop cans and Dorito wrappers somewhere. The wind doesn't create all that. So anyway, thanks. All right. Thank you, Ms. Cooper, and thank you for caring. Thank you for caring. Some of your questions will be answered in some of the uh, updates, and we're certainly glad to have uh, a conversation with you. And then, you know, um, also regarding the um, flyers, there may be another way that you can get that information to the Redevelopment Commission, because I don't know about the others, but I don't think any of us had copies um, of it. Did you, did anybody on the commission? No, I, I didn't, I didn't well, I think so. But anyway, let's, uh, let's just work on communication to go from there. You okay? I got some water here if you need it, boss. Yeah. She needs some water? Yeah, sir. She got a tomorrow. She got a obtain right again. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Just want to make sure you're okay. Okay. Um, so, being uh, there are no other comments, we are moving on to item uh, six. Consider adopting a resolution requesting the Board of Aldermen allocate funds appropriated for the executive director's salary to the Redevelopment uh, Commission. You know, this item was, we had a special call meeting for uh, this item, and so this is a continuation of that um, item. But I ask that the entire commission uh, take the opportunity to submit questions, any questions that they had um, so that they could fully make a decision regarding this item. And there were questions submitted. And uh, the city manager has answered uh, those um, questions. Um, and so what we're going to do at this time, uh, we're going to get the answer to those questions. They are hot off the press. And so we're going to get the answers to those questions. So we're going to take 10 minutes to review them, and then we will come back to this um, item. Any questions as to what we're doing here regarding? Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. We're going to take a 10-minute break. Thank you so much. Okay, again, thank you, thank you uh, so much. Okay, we are at item uh, six. You have um, seen the questions and the answer to 
um, those questions. So here is um, the way in which we will handle that. Okay, uh, item six says to us, consider adopting a resolution requesting the Board of Aldermen allocate funds appropriated for the executive director's salary to the um, redevelopment com uh, commission. And we have uh, the resolution um, attached. But as I said in the beginning, there are several questions asked that could not be answered at our last meeting. And so there were questions submitted to the city uh, manager and he has answered those uh, to the best of his um, ability. So we can move forward with uh, the consideration. We can have a conversation, discussion about the questions and um, I'm sure questions usually bring more questions. <laughs> That's usually the way um, that it is. So I'm gonna start um, with Commissioner uh, Wallace uh, this evening, <laughs> and he knows. He knows. I was ready. I was, <laughs> was going to go after Judy. Uh, <laughs> I, I defer to Judy. <laughs> oh no, you cannot do that. We had a special call meeting, and it was named. All right. Um, yes, sir, Commissioner Wallace. <laughs> uh, okay. You um, can sir, and you can certainly pass, and we'll come back to you. Okay. All right. Um, uh, the question that was raised, um, and they, it was an answer saying that the, the position has been included in the 2024 budget. Yes. Uh, but my question was, would that be recurring? Um, and that, that's kind of a half an answer. We didn't know if this position is going to be, you know, if we're going to have this while we do our is what I was asking. So maybe I can get that at a later date, but I need to know if it's recurring. That was Assistant my biggest thing. Assistant manager, can you elaborate a little? I can basically just tell you that the positions, uh, the allocation of the budget is done uh, every fiscal year. So right now we can't say what the next board might want uh, for that position. So mm -hmm. the current board, the, the last decision was that for this next budget is, is in there. So I can't say that the next board may ch not change that for uh, 2025. Yeah. Okay. I guarantee you. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, and before I pass it to Julius, I reserve the right chair to come back to based on what Julia said, but um, this uh, an answer that was given that me serving on several boards, being in the profession that I'm in, really stops me, concerns me. Um, mm -hmm. Because it, it's a lot of liability with this particular phrase in this paragraph. Mm -hmm. um, saying that we would be responsible for in benchmarking with TDA, they use it as an example, um, personnel policies, that the employees must adhere to. That's a two-way street in HR. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get in trouble just as bad as the employee. Um, and I think, I think it's nobody up here, HR director with this particular group. So that just, that concerns me, that being the right right here in front of me like that. Just wanted to throw that out to the commission to make sure that I brought attention to that particular fourth paragraph last sentence. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Wallace. Uh, Commissioner mm -hmm. Walker. Um, you know, I don't know that it's really a question. It's just a kind of a summary. Um, Ms. Bowman was with us for six months and she resigned from the position. Mm -hmm. And I would like to think we, we desperately, we definitely need another person to um, be a li liaison and do some work. You know, we are a volunteer board of people. We, this isn't our eight to five job. And we get criticism for not getting things done, but we we bring the skill sets that we have, and we need somebody who is doing the work during the day. That mm -hmm. was what that position was for. So, at this point in time, it, Ms. Bowman resigned. Would the city hire another executive director for us? Um, we still need that person, mm -hmm. and an understanding. It took her six months to get up to speed, and understand the role of the job and so that's going to be another uh, amount of time and I feel like we um, are getting the burden from uh, being blamed for not getting things done when it takes a while to get things done and, and have even when somebody's in that position. Okay. 
Thank you, Commissioner Wolf. Mm -hmm. Vice Chair. Uh, the consideration of, of us hiring an executive director under the purview of the board, this, this commission, I, I just, I can't imagine that. <laughs> uh, you know, asking, asking the alderman for the salary is one thing, but the, all the other things that go along with that, the office, the equipment, uh, benefits, <laughs> and so forth. Sal salary is just one part, and mm -hmm. in today's world, probably 75% of the total cost of employment, let alone the office and the equipment and all that type of stuff. So I, I, I just really don't see that at all. I do agree with you and, and Beth in that I would want to strongly encourage the Board of Aldermen to immediately begin the process of identifying and hiring a new executive director. And that's you know, the, the resolution, I, you know, since we're going to have to ultimately get back down to the resolution yes. uh, itself, the, the resolution uh, made it clear at, at special meeting the way it's written. Uh, if, I, if I were an alderman, like, like Mr. Prill out there, I, I wouldn't vote for this because it has no identification of what we're going to do with the money. Right? <laughs> so, give me the money, a blank check. And that, that, so the, the resolution as it's currently written, I cannot support uh, because of the, the ambiguity associated with it. But mm -hmm. the concept that we're really discussing is, do we want to encourage the city as a city employee to hire, locate and hire a new executive director? And that I'm totally on board with and support. Okay, all right. Thank you, Vice, Vice Chair. Can we go to you, Commissioner Parham? Uh, yeah. Um, I guess I can make it simple. I would vote against this resolution. What? <laughs> I mean, I, I got a see. I, I asked five. I get asked five questions. Uh, I got answers to three. The other two I didn't get because the city manager said it was a personnel issue. And I don't, uh, I think that's very important for me to, to know what, the, what the, the answers to those two questions were. Mm -hmm. um, and the question was, did the previous director do an exit interview? And did anyone know the problem that the director was faced with? Those are my two questions that I would love to get an answer to because, uh, you know, <coughs> what happened? Why did she go? But this resolution here to ask to send the money here, I think the city should continue to be responsible for hiring uh, the executive director and push forward as soon as possible. Okay. All Thank right. you, Commissioner Parker. Now, the question is that correct? I can't answer. I can't get answers to those two questions because it's a personal issue. Which questions are you referring to, Mr. Parker? Did the previous director do an exit interview, and did anyone know the problem that the director was faced with? I think the city manager's position is those two questions would fall within the purview of him having to disclose personnel information and without a waiver to be able to do so. There's no without, what now? without a waiver allowing him to do so or a release of information allowing him to do so. I don't think he has any other legal basis to disclose that information. Now, who would the waiver come from? An employee mm -hmm. always has the ability to um, sign a release of information allowing a person or entity to review their personnel information or okay. share personnel information. Okay. Thank you. Is that a Yes, sir. Is that a simple form? Or is that just a simple handwritten note notarized stating that? They take that many different forms. Very often, um, subsequent employers will want various different information, background checks, that type of thing. So some entities will have forms, um, but a written communication indicating that it's appropriate to disclose confidential personnel information to a particular person or entity is generally sufficient. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And, I, and I know it's you know policy that the city manager has the authority to do those things, uh, but with us and her being in that position or anyone being in that position, it would have definitely been a plus if she had to remain two to three more weeks 
to tie some loose ends, to direct us where she is, what was going on, and just inform us of what's happening in terms of, uh, of the commission. So, you know, you know, when somebody leaves, it's like, okay, where did they put the pencil? Where did they do this? They, some things I think we might not be in place to push right now because she just left. So sometimes we just, I think we just have to uh, figure out ourselves of what's going to help us move forward instead of just saying, okay, go, I'll see you later. That's just my feeling. Okay? Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, um, Commissioner uh, Parham. Okay. Commissioner Bryant. I have to agree with uh, Commissioner Parham. For one reason, I am new on this board, only been here for four months. The questions that I asked was about 15 questions. I don't think they were personal. I think I needed, you know, the right to know some of these questions that I asked, being a new person up here. And I mean, in the last five years, this board had been going on, and it seemed like nothing was getting done. Communication is not there. I mean, things were sent out to different people. Um, looking back at some of the things that was supposed to have been said that Ms. Bowman did, I mean, if you go back five years, there was a lot of mistakes in the minutes. And so being the new person, well, not only the new person, Sarah, I, she could speak for herself, but for me, I needed a lot of clarification. That's why I asked those questions. So I agree with um, Commissioner Parham that the resolution, I will not vote on it. Okay. And I still have a lot of questions to ask. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Parham. Thank you so much. Commissioner Strickland. Uh, well, I guess whenever everything's already been said, there's not a reason to say a whole lot more. So it sounds like universally there's a belief that the, uh, the motion is presented or the, 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 the guidance has, has been presented is pretty much a non-starter. So I think it would probably be more appropriate to shift the conversation to our ask of the city going forward with the hire. Um, should that decision be formally entered into? Um, I would ask that the, if at all possible, the board have an increased role in the determination of the selection. Uh, if that's not feasible, I would kindly request that maybe the collective board or board chair, board vice chair, be uh, granted some level of a veto over any decision that may come out of the committee that's put together, if that's feasible. Um, above and beyond that, uh, I think the, the intent of the idea of the development commission, redevelopment commission employing an executive director was to provide a greater level of autonomy and kind of make, make the lines a little clearer as to what the marching orders were for the person in that role. Um, I make no bones about it. Whenever you're serving multiple masters, you're not serving any of them very well. And I'm sure that uh, the, the person in that role previously had a constant battle of, okay, which, which, which person do I answer? whenever questions come about, who, who, who do I satisfy? Um, so with that being said, in an ideal world, and this is just one commissioner talking, I would be inclined to make the ask of the city, would it be possible to consider an arrangement akin to that which the city manager has, where they serve at the pleasure of the board and they answer to that board with, instead of the board being the Board of Aldermen, the board being the Redevelopment Commission and us tasked with the responsibility and power that comes with that. Just one person talking, not discuss that with anybody here. That's just me kind of thinking through the process of what would make it clear where the lines are drawn. So someone in that role is not directly reporting to one position, ultimately answering to a manager of that position with a group of city leadership asking questions directly and indirectly all the time, and then having another board that you're officially working for. So I don't know if either of those requests are possible, but that, that, that's all what I have to add, moving on from the consideration of us directly employing the individual. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Wallace, you had something else. Mm -hmm. um, just to piggyback off of uh, what my colleagues have just said, um, I work in Raleigh, I work with a lot of Raleigh. So I've been on this commission. Uh, we've been told a lot of what we can't do, what we can't do, and then sometimes that's sweet, and then we can't do it. Our charge changed from when we first took over, took, took this, these positions. Um, and we answer to the lawmaking body of the city of Newburgh. So being that we in 
been through this process, we've been through this journey, and we've learned from this journey. Um, we just asked um, possibly if the alderman would uh, take that in consideration and tweak some of the things that we do so we can be effective in what we're doing and, 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 and attain our goals. Um, it's a lot of things, but we, I don't even think we could say some of the things we said up here right now, um, to be honest with you, because of personnel. But um, we serve the lawmakers of the city of New York. So anything can be tweaked. Anything can be, you know, with a vote from the alderman. I just ask that we look at this um, intently, um, and then we reflect on our experiences, and then moving forward, we come up with a solution, whereas when we do get the executive director, then what Mr. Strickland, Commissioner Strickland just described um, is well taken care of prior to the new person starting. And you, Okay. Any other further comments? Okay, um, I would say I, I certainly agree. I think um, we do need to put in a letter or request to the city of New Bern to um, begin the process of hiring an executive director. But I think we need to look at that job description again. I think the commission needs to be a, um, a little bit more uh, in, involved and in really um, we need to make sure that the entire commission understands what the executive director's role is so that everyone can understand going forward um, from that. And so that is something that we certainly um, can discuss. But I think uh, at this point, we, we need to put that into um, a letter and probably would task a couple of people with, uh, with um, that. If you have any other uh, further questions, um, like I said, we've received the answer to, to uh, the questions. Um, the answers were, were given, and so they are what they are. And so if there are any other, certain, you, you are, you're certainly welcome to uh, email you know, the city uh, manager, assistant city manager, and can um, go from there. But at this time, we need to um, act on item six. And I don't want to make no assumptions um, based on what everyone said, but I don't want to make any assumptions. And so we will need a motion and a second, a yes or, or no. Is that correct, attorney? If a member of this commission would like to move forward with the resolution as it's been printed or modified, that person can make a motion. If there's a second, you'd call for a vote. If there is no motion, you can proceed to the next agenda item. Okay. Or another alternative is if there's no motion to move forward with the resolution, but you would like to um, get some direction about drafting a letter to the city manager, articulating your request that the city of New Bern move forward with hiring an executive director, you certainly can move forward with that direction. Okay. All right. What say ye? We'll go out in the resolution. Yes, ma'am. No. Nope. We will not move forward with the resolution item six. Right. Does it have to be formal about the city moving forward? Do we need to do that now? If, if, if it's the consensus of the members of this commission that you would like the city manager to move forward with hiring, I'm an executive director, and if you would like to articulate what type of role you would like to play in that selection process, then you certainly can um, have that discussion and authorize the chair to draft that letter or one of your members, if, if that's your inclination. Yeah. Steve. 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 I'm not familiar. We don't have an executive. Right, right, right. Okay, right. Yeah, we don't have an executive okay, okay. Um, committee. Um, what I would put, uh, go ahead. I would like to make the recommendation to the board uh, that we uh, ask uh, Mr. Strickland, uh, who I thought made a great presentation about the involvement of the board in the hiring process and mm -hmm. defining of roles and management going forward, uh, if he would be willing to articulate that in a draft letter for all the rest of the commission to look at before we forward to the Good. the board of aldermen Good I, I take no issue with doing that but i want to make sure that we're not violating any rules by circulating 
emails and communicating offline. So that's going to be, <laughs> would that create some sunshine issues? If there's a, a group email, there's an opportunity for a quorum issue. What you might do is, um, this meeting is being recorded. So if it's the will of the commission that the city manager move forward with the selection process, um, that information is being absorbed by the assistant city manager and he can relay that information. If you all want to think about language about how you articulate your role going forward in the selection process, um, then certainly if you want to have telephone calls and less than a quorum, um, we can get creative about how it is that you can satisfy all the open meeting requirements and still get the input from everybody about what okay. that language should be. Well, if, if, if Mr. Strickland were, Commissioner Strickland were to create this draft that we talked about and just email it to three people at a time, would that? We can get, we, we can have a conversation about the best way to satisfy the open meetings laws and also accomplish your goal to make sure that the language that Mr. Strickland drafts is reflective of everybody's collective okay. thinking. Okay. okay. So once you get the letter, we'll take care of that. He can give me okay. a call and, and we can figure out the best way to get everybody's input and, and that sort of thing. Okay. okay. Good deal. Thank you. We have a consensus? It's time. It's good. If I may, just for the sake of knowing what the board's temperature is, is there a universal agreement with the two things that I threw out with a greater board involvement or and or a, an, an ability to to overrule or give a thumbs down on the decision? Well, and or included in the decision. I mean, that's what we need. Yeah. yeah. And or a direct report to this board as opposed to city officials? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't even know I think, if it's doable. But no, I, I, I think that's blurring the line. I, I th let me say this. Um, again, going back to the fact that it will be a city in pro, you cannot dictate to their, their rules. And so I think, you know, sticking, um, going with the letter um, saying, you know, um, our wishes that you go ahead and hire one and that the board needs to be involved without a whole lot of stipulations and have those conversations because I, I, um, we try, we need a collaboration. And we, you don't get collaboration partnerships with demands, constant de demands. I think looking and reviewing the job description and looking at some other things. Because even though many of us may not know what happened, something something did. Right. And so if you just say, would you please go ahead and hire, hire, hire someone else, go ahead and start the search process. You're gonna end up right back where you were. Yes, sir. Um, I don't think we want to demand anything of the city managers, but we do want to, being that this is a unique entity new to the city, well, maybe not be new, but it's <laughs> not after brought five back years. new. Um, it's new as far as 2018, um, 2019, but uh, just, uh, we're going to be we're back where we are, where we started already, is what we're saying, and we're trying to learn from what we, yep. the last six months is all. Right. We don't want to demand anything of the city. The city manager right. is the city manager. Mm -hmm. um, but we do want to be included in decisions, mm -hmm. so we're aware. And more we'll have more the cooperative management. Right. Yeah. And, and we, so yeah, the situation that like that now. happen again, we're here to make sure that doesn't happen again. Happen and again. that's where the miscommunication right. comes in. And that's why I'm not comfortable being on this board because, again, five years ago, they didn't move anywhere. And now you're at a standpoint because you don't have an executive director to move you forward. And so what's going to happen now, six months, we're right back where we started. And I've only been up here four months. So we're right back where we started again. And that's why I said that we need to move forward and we need to have someone in here so that that won't occur again. So you got your letter. Go first mm -hmm. can, can I make a comment? Um, yes, sir. I, I think the uh, chair, chairman made a good point is that um, we, we have a situation where the executive director 
uh, has a position description and they will be working for the city. So with that being in mind, they, that person has to go by city policies and procedures which may differ with what you all's opinions may be. But what I will say is the person sitting in that seat, and, and I'll take on that responsibility right now, is we get direction from you all. It doesn't have to be at a standstill right now. If you all have a direction that you want to go into, all you, you can continue with the direction you're going and just give us direction as to how we can assist you all with what, wherever you are with, with the process that you're in. Uh, I think you're in a good place. You got a, a several things already in the works. And as long as you continue to go forward and give us direction, we'll be more than happy to support uh, you all in those endeavors. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. It, yes. it, it may be helpful um, for these members to contemplate what exactly, what type of role you would like in the selection process. Mm -hmm. It might also be helpful for members who may have participated in the past selection process to talk about what their experience was so that if you're asking for greater involvement, you can be specific about what that involvement might look like. Would you like, if there's a nationwide search, should there be a nationwide search for an executive director? Should there be um, various stakeholders that participate in the selection process? Who should those stakeholders be? How many of the commission members should be involved in the selection process, less than a quorum at any one moment? Those are some of the types of considerations that might be useful um, and forwarding to the city manager as he contemplates how to move forward to fill the position that is responsible ultimately to him because they're a city yes. employee, mm -hmm. um, but to also meet your needs in, in as much as you need assistance in moving your, your objectives forward. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, we're moving on to item seven, unless there's any, anything else on that item. Okay, all right, thank you. Discussion on 203 and 207 Jones Street, which are also proposed uh, parcels lots A, B, and C fronting on Walt Bellamy uh, Drive. Vice Chair. Uh, I don't know. There's not a lot to discuss. The board, the commission approved the, the, the plats at, at the last meeting, and here they are right here ready in form and style to be recorded. Uh, the chairman signed them this evening, and so they'll be recorded before the end of the week. Uh, so that will put all that in play and ready to go. Uh, we have, that's just a minor part of the surveying process. We have, um, have contract proposals on bidding a, a bid to build the houses, and we have put together a budget, and we have secured the financing for the three houses that we're proposing to build uh, on these lots. So, I mean, this this is not new. This is all kind of, this is a rehab. Sale, right? huh? Yes, the houses will be for sale. Okay. 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 Any questions? Any questions, yeah. No. That would become, um, give uh, some, uh, probably a little bit of additional information in the housing report, do we need to talk about the, um, the address change or did they stay the same? Address has stayed the same. Oh, okay, okay. We, we had a little uh, little burp in the process with, with, through, through the process, and, but it was all resolved and they stayed the same. Okay, all right. Everyone? Is there one additional one there? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's three lots. They added there's an additional two lot. Three, two or seven, is there now a two or five? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they got they have an it, it, was, it, was, it was in the in the yeah, you know, the process is when you do a new plat, you go to the city uh, to a designated individual in the police department who assigns every every address in the city of Newburn. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so we did that. And we have the letters from that individual assigning that and they came up they came into question because they're out of sequence with the neighbors down the street. Oh, there was okay. a big gap okay. in, in, okay. from where we are. And so that got challenged uh, and it got resolved and it stayed in the same because we had the letters and everything from the city uh, about where they would, how they would be addressed. And so it's all the same. 
It's okay. just one of those deals where you have a bump in the road, you got to spend some time getting it all ironed out. That's all. I did their person will get that. 203B? No, the addresses are 1,002, 1,004, oh, and 1,006. Gotcha. Well, okay. tell me drive. Okay. Oh, okay, so okay. they're not. I was oh, okay. confused. I thought they were when you said they're staying the same. I'll We're talking about the talking. new lots. Okay. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. So they will have their own mailbox. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, moving on to agenda item eight: discussion on the status of 911 Hubanks Street. Commissioner Walker. Um, 911 Eubank Street is, is a successful project because we've had a, a good contractor who's gotten that work done quickly. And really what I need to have um, the commission consider tonight is there was a change order that the contractor developed uh, in the amount of $8,500. And this money represents um, items that the city identified when they did the inspection of the property. Um, and all three of these items were part of the house being moved there and the foundation being built. And that was outside of our contractor's contract. Mm -hmm. So it was assumed that those were completed correctly and they were not included in our contract documents. So mm -hmm. the contractor had no responsibility to do them. However, when the inspections office came and inspected his work, they were identified as um, deficiencies. And in order to get a certificate of occupancy, they would need to be corrected. So he put pen to paper to do these things and it, the total is $8,500. That would include grading the site um, inside and outside for the foundation to be um, um, the water to flow uh, correctly mm -hmm. and he had to fill a hole underneath the house that was left that would cause water to, to pond. Okay. Um, to brace the frame to the foundation from the work, um, they put the foundation straps in place or set them, but they did not connect them to the house when the house was moved there. Mm -hmm. So that was not completed. Okay. So that's what he would also do and then install the vapor barrier under the house. Okay. Um, I will say that everything else has been completed with the house, with the exception of um, the last time I spoke with Mr. Mumford, that he was waiting for the door, the front door to be um, arrived. Okay. And I don't know, I know he's in the audience tonight. He's done a great job. Mm -hmm. And I, I just want to say I appreciate that. It's been real easy to work with. Um, so I, I'm proposing that we approve this change order out of our funds so that we, he can finish the project and he's still ahead of schedule. The schedule we gave him to be completed by was June 8th. Okay. All right. Um, you have that uh, invoice there, that proposal in your, in your packet um, there. Uh, and I have, I checked with uh, Jennifer and uh, there is funds in the um, account for this. It would not come out uh, from CDBG, it will come directly from redevelopment funds. Need a motion? Yes. So moved. Second. Question? Who made the motion? Mr. Park. Julius. J just to clarify, Ms. Walker, I believe you mentioned that the first part of what's being done was not clearly not in the scope of the, the prior contractor that is in charge of moving the house. Is there, is there any piece of what's being done on this that there's any way, shape, or form whatsoever that we could hold the initial contractor that moved the house responsible, or is that ship sailed? That ship sailed. Um, my understanding is that the contractor, we, the city, hired someone to do the foundation work, and then a different contractor set the house on the foundation work. So I don't think there was ever was never um, considered to be complete at that time and inspected as such. Um, so that was really outside of our, the commission didn't do that, the city did that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I answered your question, so. 
<laughs> and I think that do you remember the house was left in the air. It wasn't sitting down for a long time, and so you know we had to continually pay those funds, which ate up some uh, some funds. So I, I agree with her that she has sailed. So we need to get it done. Okay. I do. And I, I will say one thing. I, unfortunately, this project was going great, and um, the house was broken into. And brand new appliances that Mr. Munford had installed were stolen. And in the back window, brand new, the only brand new window in the house was broken out as well. Brand new. Brand new. Yeah. So like I said, I would like to get him complete. I know he would like to be complete and it be our property <laughs> and not his property. <laughs> yeah. So we've had uh, a motion and a second and a question and the question uh, answer. So, uh, all in favor? Roll call, I, please. We need a roll call. Okay. Commissioner Walker? Yes. Commissioner Bryant? Oh, you didn't come to me first? Yes. <laughs> yeah. You were second. <laughs> Commissioner Strickland? Yes. Commissioner Parham? Yes. Commissioner Wallace? Yes. Chair Lee? Yes. Co-Chair Paragoy? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, agenda item nine, working group uh, reports, health and wellness uh, center. You should have re uh, received that uh, report. Commissioner Wallace is here um, tonight for further elaboration. Presentation here. I'm still <laughs> surfing for it. <laughs> so, um, but there we go. Okay, with the health and wellness um, update, health and wellness work group update, um, in this coming week, uh, we will meet with other departments uh, to mainly to finalize the health and wellness center. We've had some conversations and uh, wanted to talk to some people and, and visualize exactly what it needs to look like and kind of finalize it. The interior of it. Um, uh, I think uh, housing does did a great job with the schematics, um, but then the question came up: Do we want to have it as an open bay, like the emergency room is, with the curtain, so we can be more flexible in, in what we do in our programming approach, or do we want to have the hard drywall, which you can't do anything with until it's in? I mean, when it's in, it's, it's in. You can't alter. It. You can't alter that. So I have a meeting with um, the health department, Dr. Fisher and some others on Thursday, so we can begin that conversation. Once I get those specs, I plan to meet with uh, Mr. Williams and maybe um, legal, just to make sure I'm on the right track before we secure the building contractor. Um, we are working to break ground by June 30th of 2023. The best way to, to get things done is to go ahead and state it. State your goal in reverse engineer on how you're gonna get there. So I'm gonna state it right now and say June 30th, 2023 is when we're hoping to break ground and we're gonna be working with all deliberate speed to make that happen. We have the specs, we have the schematics, and now we're gonna get the um, professional input that we need um, on the interior of the structure. And then we should be able to go in front of a contractor depending on the feedback I get from the two entities I need to meet with this week. We will also continue to benchmark and network with existing health and wellness centers. We have a uh, community partner, uh, possibly a block, uh, block captain is in Durham right now, um, working with Duke and North Carolina Central. and. Uh, with the departure of the, the former ED, I'm still trying to reconnect with my with our contacts from the Michael Jordan Foundation in Wilmington, uh, just to so we can cast a wide net on the assistance. Once that shovel hits the ground, we'll be ready to go once it's completed. Um, and that's my report. Short. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Wallace, the, the Lincoln uh, Center is the one that we all visited, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. All right. Did we tell them that she's from uh, Newburn? Yes, 
We did not. The yes. uh, actual uh, assistant director, I don't even have it in front of me. I had it the last two weeks. You did? <laughs> I don't have it in front of me. But she is from New Bern. She has extensive family here. Yes. Um, definitely. And she pretty much is part of the team now. She said that we can call at any time for any guidance that, that we would need. And she's been very proactive in letting us know the barriers we probably <laughs> encounter yes. once we get rolling. But uh, I'll have all that. And actually, I'm going to go over the tour in my next update. So okay. make sure we, we let everybody know what we learned while we were down. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tafari, I want to bring a question to your attention. Uh-oh. Uh, well, no, it's good. <laughs> but you we just need to be thinking about, you say you want to secure a building contractor, which it sounds like you may be considering a, contra a design build um, arrangement where the contractor hires a designer to actually do that. That is a very big part of that project. It will have to have a set of documents that will be approved by the city. And I'm, our concept plan is really just that, just a concept to get you started. Mm -hmm. And there's two ways to do it. You can either design it and then hire con bid the contractors to bid it or bid for the contractors and they each bring a design person with them as part of their team. Um, you know, I just wanted you to keep that in mind. But th so, there's going to have to be a design component in there somewhere. <laughs> I am so glad you said that, my fellow commissioner. Notice in my uh, dialogue I said two entities. Uh, one was Mr. Williams and the next one was the housing work group. So, uh, so <laughs> I'm going to have got have got it sort of already. So yeah. you, what you mean you is the architect and the developer is what you mean. <laughs> Not the housing working group. Yeah. The architect and the developer. And the developer, yeah. <laughs> Guidance, you yes. Know, so like <laughs> I can certainly give you guidance as, as to who, where to turn to for that. Thank you so much. And from the yeah. development side, the first thing, there's still three separate lots there. You need to get them combined into one. Right. Like so, uh, we got right here for Jones right. Street. Get a surveyor to do that work. Okay. And I've been, I've been having lots of conversations with our legal staff about the procurement process of hiring contractors. Jamie, you want to review that for us again? Because it, it, it applies to a big problem we're having with the, getting the three houses built as well as anything else and, and probably impact what you're doing also. Okay. So just to give a, an overall <laughs> view, um, whenever public funds are being used to construct things, building structures, there's a process that has to happen in mm -hmm. order to make sure that the public knows that the public body is being a good steward over those funds. So a competitive bidding process is generally utilized. Yep. And there are special rules depending on how much the contract price is. If it's $30,000 or less, there's a set of rules. If it's between $30,000 and $300,000, there's some rules over $500,000. There are various different benchmarks. Um, so once you assess what, um, what you need, how much it may cost, then that will trigger which set of bidding requirements will be applicable. Um, and then city staff can provide you with assistance to make sure that we're bidding properly, uh, whether the bids have to be informal or formal, whether they have to be sealed or unsealed, timetables, you'll have support in tracking all of that information. Very similar to the process that was utilized for the, um, the UBEX house. Could be applicable to the Health and Wellness Center, just depending on how much it may cost. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you so Which much. Which may, I, I don't know, if we'll be able to accomplish all of those very different checks before the date that you just pronounced. So that date may need to be flexible. Okay, be flexible, but we're going to shoot for it. <laughs> okay. okay, any other questions for Commissioner Wallace? Okay. All right, thank you so much. Housing Working Group Vice Chair. And you should have that report. Yeah, the report mm -hmm. is in your packet. Uh, we met on uh, May 2nd and discussed a whole bunch of things. Um, going back to the Eubanks house, uh, Beth has covered most all of that. Uh, I did want to want to everyone know that we're, we'll be getting a, a quote from a certified real estate appraiser to appraise the house now that it's complete so that we know what its value is and we can use that in, in setting our pricing and sale, mm -hmm. sale process. And we're also getting the house measured so that we can accurately uh, publicize that. With, with <laughs> current, current, and that, a lot of some stuff has changed on the interior of the house, so all, all the rooms need to be measured. It's a, it's a standard process in 
in real estate uh, to have houses measured and before you put them in the MLS or anywhere else so that you don't get sued later on because the house is two feet, two square feet less than, <laughs> than you advertised. Right. So uh, that process is in way. I've been in contact with, with an appraiser who does that work and uh, I will be getting a price from them in the morning. Uh, Jones Street, we've talked about that also uh, earlier at, uh, on the agenda item. Mm -hmm. uh, like I say, the plats will creating the three lots for us to build on will be uh, registered uh, with the Register of Deeds this week. Uh, the West A Street property, our legal staff has been working diligently trying to make me happy <laughs> with the situation there. Uh, and what it was was that the GIS maps, which, you know, they're not a thousand percent accurate. They work mm -hmm. on a large scale. It had a property line that kind of went through one of the houses that sits on that property. And so it brought into question the property line where it really was. Uh, and we didn't want to go in and take down the house that somebody else had a vested interest in. Uh, that's usually not a lot of fun working through things like that. So uh, we instructed uh, at our last meeting, I do believe, or maybe the meeting before for legal staff to uh, pursue getting a line agreement to solidify that one property line uh, on that West A Street property. And what we have gotten is an affidavit, for lack of a better term, from the owner of the adjacent property that they have no, no interest in the house and gave the address and the parcel number of the house whatsoever. It was not on their property. And they gave us an indication that there was an old wire fence uh, located on the property that was the property line and has been historically been the property line. And so I will, I will ask the uh, legal staff if they will comment on that and, and also validate that we have good title and property description on that property. Absolutely, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, so the inspections department has worked very diligently with trying to untangle um, where that house is situated and who, who the house belongs to because obviously um, there's some significant structural issues with that mm -hmm. house. Um, the affidavit, and I use air quotes, um, with the word affidavit that yeah. was sent, actually was sent to our building, our building inspector, um, Patrick Gazelle. The language in that letter um, referred to a lot of different moving parts and just to make sure that we were all clear and on the same page, um, my office sent a letter to the adjacent property owners with a picture of the house that's in question and said, Do you, the redevelopment commission owns this house. We believe that it encroaches on your property. Do you have any issue with the redevelopment commission demolishing this house at its own expense? And the property owners uh, responded resoundingly that they have no interest in the house and are excited about you all demolishing that house at your cost. Um, so those two documents together um, make me feel much better about you all moving forward with the demolition okay. of the house and minimizing or mitigating any liability um, that might come forward with destroying somebody's somebody else's dilapidated house. I think it's yours. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. Uh, we, at our meeting, uh, we also discussed uh, an, an issue that I brought up at the last meeting, which was uh, to, to revisit and take another look at our minimum pricing policy for our property that we own in the redevelopment commission. Uh, and, you know, the housing work group uh, makes the recommendation that we look at uh, the 75 percent of tax value, which is the current policy, be, a, be clarified to be strictly applicable to properties on the surplus list that, that the commission approved several months ago. And that all other redevelopment commission property will be valued by the commission at the time of an inquiry uh, of a buyer. Yeah. We probably will need to get a resolution created with that. Uh. Yep. Yes, sir. Um, I think 
the resolution should certainly incorporate the current surplus property list. That way we know exactly which properties are subject to that 75% rule. Um, I will say that um, your previous purchasing policies, including that minimum bid um, contemplation, were adopted when you had an executive director, well, before you had an executive director. Mm -hmm. And now that you don't have a, a dedicated person, changing a lot of your administrative processes may create some challenges that you might want to reflect upon. But specifically as it relates to, um, I think, some of the comments that Commissioner Walker made about <coughs> the Eubanks house, how it's just about ready for sale, you may want to take some time, because I, Mr. Vice Chair, I don't know if that house is on your surplus property list. I, I imagine it's not. No. Okay. You can vote as this body to say, okay, the minimum bid price for that structure is X. You can do that at any time, considering it's unique differences from some of the other properties that you have uh, in your inventory. So I'm happy to come back if you want to direct me to present a resolution, but I just want to put in your hearing that too many or some significant administrative Change. changes in this mm -hmm. period um, may have some challenges. Yeah, yeah and, and the, the, the creation of the surplus property list was done so that we could provide the city clerk that list so that when someone came in to inquire about property, she would know immediately who owned it and if it were even available for sale. So, I, I mean, from administrative process, it, that, that hasn't changed, I don't think, that the surplus list was created to benefit the city clerk in dealing with potential purchasers. Yes, sir, I, I agree with that assessment, but if there are now properties that you would enter, it's my understanding that the only properties that were for sale by the commission were the properties indicated on that list. Correct. If now you're saying that there are other properties that you would entertain selling that are not on that list, then that's a significant change in position. Okay. So if, if that's the case, then perhaps we need to reflect and think through that to see how we can best implement that, that change so that one, the city clerk can accept bids in an appropriate way um, that's satisfactory to the standards that you set, that the public has a very clear idea about what's for sale and what's not, and that all of these members understand what, what's happening going forward. Okay. Yes, sir. I would like to so oh, okay. I would like to so direct the city turn uh, the our legal staff to create that document, that resolution for our review uh, for our next meeting. If, all possible. I'm seeing some heads shaking yes. Is that? Yeah. Yes. Go for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll do. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. All right. That's one more thing. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there's more. Yeah, there is. It, it was kind of interesting uh, as we, the, C, the, the alderman recently uh, approved the CB. CBDG block grant money for uh, the upcoming year. And one of the allocations in the plan was $70,000 for demolition of three structures. And you know, it's been our experience that, uh, that that's a lot of money for three structures. And was, we were wondering if, if there was any way that this commission to could utilize any of those funds to demolish some of the structures in the redevelopment commission, uh, such as the house that we just talked about on West A Street, uh, that those funds would be available for us to use uh, for some demolition work. That's, that's, that's a question because we don't have no idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that, that this putting two and, two and two together and coming up with four, uh, with what our experience for demolition costs are, uh, versus the amount of money and the number of structures to be uh, demoed look like there might be a little bit of extra fun in laying around. And if so, we would certainly like to be able to utilize it if that is at all possible. Okay. But we would because we already have some ready to go. Yeah. yeah. I, I do I just want to add that I was at the Alderman's meeting too, and they said they wanted to, it was 70000 dedicated for blighted structures, which we have some mm -hmm. ready to go. Okay. 
All right. Well, um, I think the thing is to have a conversation with staff that is in charge of CDBG at a, at a later time. She's just heard that, and we can talk with her at a later time to get some clarification okay. on whether or not that can be done, whether it's even within a purview or it has to go back to the alderman for amendments and all of those kind of things. Okay. And let me ask real quick. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Do we have a price for the demolition of A? No, we need to. Okay. We, that's another. I know we had some other ones. I didn't step. know if we had that one yet. Okay. okay. And, and perhaps the inspections department may have done some research on that issue. I'm um, sure. So if, if you like some, whatever information, if any exists in the inspections department, I'm sure Mr. Williams can get that information for your next meeting. I'm sure it's on the. Um, it's on the. We. Um, as a matter of fact, we need an updated minimum housing list. If we could, we could get that at our next meeting. We can send it out in our packets. So every uh, all the commission can be aware. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Morgan is. Uh, it's not here with us. He is excused. So there is no uh, neighborhood work uh, group uh, report tonight. Do we have any new business, Commissioner Wallace? Anything else? Uh, yes, and I hope this is the correct venue to uh, comment on uh, some of the uh, questions earlier. Just wanted to reply. Can I do that? <laughs> <laughs> it's good. It's not bad. Trust me, it's good. It's actually good. No, it's 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 fine. It's okay. Good. All right. Thank um, you, Ms. Burt. Yeah. As yeah. far as um neighborhood cleanup, I'm I'm I'm, I'm upset that I, I missed it. I missed my perfect record. I've been at every last one of them. Yes, you have. Um, and I didn't didn't know for some reason I didn't know about this one, but I would say on the next one, um, if. If I'm involved or if I'm contacted, um, I would suggest uh, barbershops, beauty salons, fraternities, sororities, they already do clean up on their own. Why not come together under the pain of Linux to do something this broad for uh, that part of the community? Duffield Residence Council, I have a conversation with them right after this meeting to see why they weren't there. I'm shocked that they weren't there um, in the Phoenix group. And we also had success at JT Barber just last week, um, mm -hmm. getting a whole lot of community members out for mm -hmm. a big concern to stand in, um, in lockstep for a historical site and keep it the way it is um, over there at JT Barber. So I plan to use that same mechanism that we use to get all those people out there to JT Barber to get them over to the, to the community cleanup. There's a contact person for that. And then social media, I never saw it on social media. So social media is the way a lot of the young folks and people under 50 get their information. They don't get it from the news, they don't see flyers, they don't come out much to do it that way. Um, and just learning from my experience in schools, um, the bins, Robbie's been crying for those bins to be in those lots since we started this, this, this commission. And I noticed from graffiti in schools, if the graffiti goes up in the bathroom and it's down the next day, your walls will stay white. But if you allow that graffiti to stay up there, others will come in, oh, well, they signed it. I'm going to sign my name with a smiley face. <laughs> you know, and the kids just keep going and going and going. Learning the lesson from Disney. Disney has proven that if you put trash cans every 10 feet, you won't have a lot of litter on your um, on the grounds. I'm not saying the city can put trash cans every day, but still that concept of more bins being there that we can keep our community clean. Um, and that's just some of the things that I was jotting down uh, that was said earlier that we can help with uh, mm -hmm. on the next one. So the next one will be a success because mm -hmm. I don't want that to go. I want that same effort that's being that's happening coming over to help us help ourselves keep that community uh, keep our community um, clean. Mm -hmm. So that was just some ideas I jotted down, and I thought new business would be the right place. Yes, yes, that is great. Thank you so, thank you so much. Commissioner Walker, anything? No, I'm good, thank you. All right. Commissioner Strickland? No, ma'am. Commissioner Prawn? No, ma'am. Vice Chair? Nope. Okay. And I don't have anything. We have no business for a closed session uh, tonight. And so if we, well, excuse me, we I am sorry. Uh, Assistant City Manager, do you have anything? I, I do not. All right. Alderman Prio, you have anything? No. All right. If we could get a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Nice. Ayes have it. Thank you so much again. Appreciate you.